You're listening to episode 134 of the Product Boss Podcast, and I have to say that this is one of my favorite episodes ever because I think that this topic is so relatable and resonates with so many of us that are entrepreneurs because it's something that we struggle with is those feelings of feeling like we want to quit and unsure of how to proceed. And I think this episode is perfect for that. I also wanted to let you know that this episode is brought to you by our new course, which is called A Year of Content. And this also helps you when you're feeling a bit stuck. Talk about showing up in front of your customer and knowing what to say. And I think that that is really hard. I find that it's easiest to show up in front of them when you know what you're going to say so you know where to start. So our year of content gives you 200 plus prompts. It gives you a plan to give you some action so you can plan this all out and you can use this for a website, email, um, social media, all the places that you're showing up so you know what to say and it makes it so much easier and I truly believe that just makes all the difference when you're feeling stuck. So again, that is at a yearofcontent.com and I will also put the link in the show notes. So friends, let's get started on this really great episode. I hope you enjoy it and let us know at Instagram at the product boss how you feel about this episode. We'd really love to hear from you. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo-Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. And introducing the other half of the Product Boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Sider, with my wonderful co-host, Mina Kunlo-Sita. Hey, Mina. Hey, Jacqueline. So today we are bringing up a topic that we've been hearing a lot. We hear it in our community. We've heard it a little bit in some of um, the groups that we run, and we wanted to bring it up with you because if it's happening with people we know, we may possibly could have come across your mind, and I think at one point or another this comes across entrepreneurs' minds. and a hundred percent, right? 100%. Yeah. So the question is what to do when you want to quit. Right. And when is the right time to quit or is it just a season that you're going through? Right. I mean, being an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. And I think there's ups and downs and you kind of get lost in your feelings a little bit. So this comes up every once in a while for all of us. And it's something that we actually ask when people come into the mastermind is, are you thinking about quitting? And that's because sometimes their decision is already made, right? Yeah. And sometimes it's not and we work through it. Yeah. So I'm sure at some point over the course of business, everybody thinks that way. Like this is hard. Maybe it's even easier if I just go back into corporate or I've even had the thoughts of like, I'm going to go work at Starbucks. Like when things go <laughs> really hard. I always, my job is that I think I'll always go back to is waitressing because it's not like you're having to like go to corporate and answer to somebody else, you know? Isn't that it's funny just, that we're not thinking to go back to the career we've come out of, but to like <laughs> waitressing in Starbucks? Yeah, that's like... <laughs> You know, it's like pretty much we're unemployable right now. And we're like, well, we're qualified for that. (laughs) So I wonder what you guys have thought about that's your, you know, your fallback that like, what if, or this is really hard. And if I don't do this anymore, this is what I could always do again. Right. We, I think we all have that. So we're going to tackle that hard question with you. And for some of you, it might just make you feel like you're not alone in those thoughts sometimes when they pop up. And for some of you, maybe it'll help bring you some clarity on decisions that you may want to be making in your business. Right. But first, we wanted to thank everybody that has has left us a review. We appreciate it so much. It's so helpful in the Apple podcast world 
to get those reviews and to hear from what, what you guys are thinking basically. And we love every single one of them and read every single one of them. Yeah. And it really does help us as well understand what you're resonating with and what you're not and getting us in front of other product-based people. It helps with them searching and finding us. So this is from Melly W2 and it's titled, I feel so greedy. She says, I feel gluttonous or she or he says, I feel gluttonous and self-indulgent enjoying so much meaty content for free. As someone new to the physical product world, I'm in awe of how much these ladies are willing to share. Brilliant advice, practical tips, and positive energy is what you'll experience every Thursday. And to top it all off, these ladies are so much fun. Well, oh my gosh, you, you know who this is, right? This is Mel. She is in Dash Insiders as well as, I think she's in MSM too. She does a stationary line. Actually, she might just be in MSM, but it's actually Mel. You know what's so funny, you guys? So behind the scenes, Jacqueline has no sense of pronunciation. <laughs> More like we have no idea who it is, but you're guessing based on people that we work with. <laughs> She'll say like random names and I'll be like, what are you talking about? And it's actually that person's name, but mixed in with like their last name. And she reads it phonetically some other different I way. I don't like so to assume me. that I know who's leaving it. I like to think maybe it's a new person that's never heard us before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> but just side note on that. But thank you so much, Mel. We love that review and we appreciate you taking the time to review us. And when we bring this up, it's because we are really close with our community. So when you guys are in our world, we're in your world. We bond so much on Instagram and really try and support you guys on Instagram. And we've got our Facebook community, which you can definitely get into. So the, when you're in our sphere, we're in your sphere and we love getting to know your businesses and support you. So moving on to this big question. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. What to do <laughs> when you feel like quitting? Yes. So I think this is a really hard question because it's like grappling with your own feelings. And sometimes you do feel isolated in making this big decision, right? It's like if you have a partner or spouse and they're like, so what are you going to do? Then you have to kind of decide, okay, this is just me sitting in my feelings and not wanting to resolve it. Um, and it's okay that I feel this way, or maybe you do want to make some sort of decision, whether that's to quit or, I mean, it's decision to keep on going as well. So first, I just want to start off by telling all of you that you're super brave, courageous, and probably not understood by as many people because you have started a product-based business. This is huge. That's why we have found each other online in this online world, because most of us don't have, we're not surrounded by a whole bunch of people that are starting product-based businesses. I'm sure you might be one of the odd men or women out that say, oh yeah, and I have this company I've started. It is courageous to pivot in your life, especially when you're an adult with children. It is courageous to start a business, right? Like just to start a business period. And then you guys are getting into product, which has a lot of costs involved in it, that is actually an investment that you're kind of like all chips on the table, putting your money in, having to make stuff, and then hoping that somebody's going to buy it. So I first want to just tell you to sit and know that you guys are already doing amazing, great things, no matter what your revenue is, just by taking this chance. And the example that you're showing to your friends, your family, your children, your spouses, just shows that like when you have an idea and you want to follow something and you want to follow your heart or you want to follow this idea down a path and test it, that's okay. Do it. Like that is amazing. It's amazing. Right. You guys don't realize the amount of people that we hear on a daily basis that tell us, I have this idea. And most of them don't move on it because it's too risky or too scary or they're not sure to how to approach it. And that's kind of why we've developed this whole community is to help them through it. But oftentimes people don't take action. They really don't. So you should give yourselves a big pat on the back because you're the ones that actually took action and made that move to make your life different than the people that are around you. And I think there's a huge difference too. And the, some of you are in this stage, so this is not, this is just to say, there's some people who make, and it's a bit of a hobby, but the people who listen to us, the ones that are really like listening to this podcast, joining the community and like our courses and all the things are people who actually want to scale. Maybe it's 
started as a hobby, but they really want to turn it into a business that makes them money, that perhaps supports their family. Like they want it to be something tangible and even almost like a legacy for their lives or their families. So, so there's the hobbyists. And they might also be a bit scared thinking like, well, I just make pottery. Who's going to want to buy my pottery? Plenty mm-hmm. of people want to buy your pottery if you want to scale it and grow it. Um, and I think that for me, I think the biggest thing is like when you do try and start making it big and it feels like it's not working and you're like, well, maybe it's me. Maybe I just, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I'm not even in this position to do this. Right. And I think that we go in knowing that it's going to be hard. So it feels overwhelming at times to think that it might be you, yourself, right? That you didn't have what it takes to stick it out. But really, I think the first thing that we all need to do is do a gut check. Like where are these feelings coming from? And is it from a place where it just feels hard and you're having a hard day? Or is it from a place that, you know what, your body and your mind and your soul and your heart is telling you it's time to pivot and move on? So I like to go to like, dating references back in the day. (laughs) So yes, these are not of the times right now, but Jacqueline's talking about when she was single. So try to think back, you know, a decade ago, (laughs) but I'm (laughs) I'm almost two. I feel like, but what I I guess why I want to reference this to something and you guys might have your own experiences in your own life, but say you're dating someone and you're like, "Mm, this is really not, this is really not the right person for me. Like in your gut, if you maybe we're older and you can make those decisions because young Jacqueline didn't. (laughs) Young, free, beautiful Jacqueline. (laughs) Still, (laughs) still same person though. (laughs) Yeah. But for you, if you know that that person's not right for you, right, that might be where you break up with them. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know, this isn't, this isn't going somewhere. Or there's, or like when you're married, you know that you've committed to it and you're like, I see this is a rough patch and I'm, and I see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm going to get there. I know it's so funny that I bring up like dating and marriage, but I, I'm trying to find something tangible for people. So I yeah, just, want- I think that's a great jumping off point, right? Because, you know, in the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey, you're different than when you're at the end of it and you feel like quitting. You really are just like in the beginning when you're dating, and you're having fun and you're young and you're vibrant and you know, your best selves are showing up for each other. That's different than when you're married and you've kind of grown into your own self and your husband or wife or whatever partner. Like what's a razor and (laughs) what's Who are you (laughs) and where did you come from? (laughs) Um, (laughs) No, but you, you develop yourselves, right? I mean, entrepreneurship is a a kind of like a version of self-development. Same with marriage and everything. And, you know, I think that's another good question that you think about is like, if you feel like quitting, what made you want to start in the first place? And are, is that reason the still the same as it is now? Yeah. So that's a great way of thinking about why you started and going back to that original thing. I think what you were saying and what we're seeing coming up in our community is there's, we work with a lot of people in the very beginning of their business, like a lot. And sometimes that self-doubt creeps in because they are having, they're worried that people don't like it. They don't, they're not doing enough, um, that they're not showing up in enough places or that their products even validated. And that's why I think when we work with them, we try and help people figure out minimum viable product, go deep, not wide, you know, really trying to like hone them in and stay focused so that there's not a crazy investment or throwing spaghetti at the walls while they're trying to figure something out. Right. But yeah. when you're a new business, you're super excited about all the potential and possibilities. Right. I could go here. I could grow it to this. If I sold more of these, oh my goodness, I got all these likes on this one post that I posted. So there's that really exciting time where it feels like there's potential in front of you. Right. I mean, thinking about that, right, it changes day to day. There's the days when you feel so excited and you feel overwhelmed with all the possibility and all the excitement and you just feel so passionate. And then even in the next day, the very next day, you could feel overwhelmed in a different way and feel like, how am I going to do this? You know, it all feels so unclear. It's, it's a lot of that. They don't know, you know, they don't have a clear brand message yet because it takes practice and speaking on it. They don't have a clear um, client yet or customer because they're unsure of who's going to start buying they don't have a clear product yet because they don't know what they need to pivot to really, you know, make it like an amazing product in delivering it. And so there's a lot of unknowns and that feels scary. So even in the very next day, it can be like, oh my gosh, this feels so scary because there's so many unknowns. But 
We want to tell you at that stage, it's not time to quit. It's just an unknown. It's just that you 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 don't know exactly where you're going to be. But if we, but when you look in hindsight a year from now, and you looked in hindsight, you'd be like, "Wow, I've come this far." Because you're putting thought behind it. Um, you're creating roadmaps. You are creating plans. You're trying to hit goals, and you guys are getting education by just you know showing up for this podcast and listening to useful tips on how to scale and grow your business. Right. So they're feeling the discomfort, you know. Because you're, you know, anybody who starts at something new is going to be the worst at it, right? The worst portion of their selves at doing something. Like the first time I went to Orange Theory and the last (laughs) time I went to Orange Theory Fitness. (laughs) Which was the same time. (laughs) Which... 100%. 100%. And they were monitoring me and I never made it into the orange zone. I felt like I was going to throw up. And I kept telling myself like, okay, if I come back, it'll be easier the next time. Now, that wasn't necessarily my place. So then cut to think about something that you've done that the first time is the hardest. You go to CrossFit, you puke that first time. Mm-hmm. You come back, you kind of know what's happening, right? You know maybe what this what it looks like, what they're gonna make you do. It's not all new. And you're like, okay, I feel like I'm gonna be nauseous again. That's cool. I already threw up yesterday. No, it's okay deal. if I do it again. Yeah. Right. Even little things like, you know, when I first did the elite boot camp, even wearing the proper shirt, because some of the time I felt so tired that I was going to puke, but my shirt kept riding up. But I'm super mm. self-conscious. So I'm just like, that's just another thing I need to worry about is my shirt creeping up and showing my stomach, you know? So next day, show up, have a proper shirt that I can tuck in or that doesn't ride up. And, you know, there's little things that help with your mental state as you keep going forward and just doing it and doing the hard things. But you wouldn't have known the changes you needed to make to be successful had you not gone through the hard part. So Mina went, the shirt was writing up. It's like same with me, necklaces and shirts that write up when I do yoga and like my necklace hits me in my teeth and it drives me nuts and I <laughs> why am I wearing my necklace. <laughs> but you guys all have those, right? So you learn and you pivot. That's the exact same thing with business. Things are hard. You go through it. You come out the other side, you pivot, you make changes. Oh, I'm not going to do that again. Or, oh, I ordered those packing labels and they were wrong. And so next time I won't do that again, right? You're learning. Right. So, so things are hard. And whether you're a startup or you've got a multi-million dollar biz, every stage of entrepreneurship has different growth struggles. Like it has that, like where you feel stretched to the max, where you feel like, am I going to break if this keeps stretching? Do I even want this? And then I think you need to go back to what your goals are. Like, what is your life goal look like? What do you right. want for yourself? What do you want for your family? Like how many hours a day do you want to be working? And it will that equal the end result that you want, let's say financially? I mean, I think that, you know, every stage is hard in its own way. There's not one stage that doesn't come without hardship. So in any stage that you're in, if you're crying in that stage, it's perfectly normal. (laughs) Oh yeah. Ask me. (laughs) Yeah. Right. You could be uber successful and still be crying, which you should be because, you know, it's a roller coaster. There's hard days and there's good days and all of it is mixed in, right? Because if you're, if you don't have those hard days, you're just not challenging yourself enough. You know, there's different things that you learn that become uncomfortable. And honestly, the more that you work with other people, there's a learning curve in every person that you work with. There's a learning curve in every process you're trying to learn. I mean, the thing about entrepreneurship is that it's a constant learning process. So We'll take a second and I want you guys to take a second, whether you're driving, don't close your eyes if you're driving, but mm-hmm. wherever you are, I want you to take a moment and think back to when you started. How did you feel? What did you want to do? And what kind of life did you want to create for yourself with the potential of what this business is? Okay. You might need more time than that, but I'm not, it's a podcast, so I can't go too long. <laughs> but I want you guys to think who was that and how, how did I feel? And then I want you to think now, does it feel, how does it feel different? Is it just that it feels harder because we're making you run on a treadmill at like 10 miles an hour and you're going to puke? Do you have to pull it back a little bit because it's, you've gone too far, too full throttle, and maybe it's not aligning with your goals and you have to pull it back a little and run at like five, you know, or is it that like, I actually hate the treadmill and I want to get off. Right. I think there's different feelings that come up when you know that you should be quitting. It's like you become, it's like when you know that like 
I don't, I don't want to say divorce, but it, that something is impending, like a big fight or divorce or whatever, right? There's like, you start being resentful of the person. They can't do anything right. You start blaming them for so many things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think what you're saying though, like the resent, resentful, mm-hmm. when you're resentful of the life you've created for yourself, then you need to reassess because ultimately if you're an entrepreneur, you're creating a life for yourself. You're not, a, all of us have power. So even if you're employed by somebody, you've created, you've gone out for that job, you got accepted into that role and you're pursuing it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think the question is, is when are you resentful of the life that you're living or when does it no longer align with the, the dreams that you do have for yourself or that you did have for yourself? Right. And if it doesn't align, you can pivot. If you're resentful, you have to decide what you're resentful of. And is it that maybe you've gone too full force or like the passion, the, what, which you've done it, you've put in the good heave, heave ho and you're, and you've taken it to its point and it's, and, and it's done for you. Right. And I think it's going back to what Jacqueline was saying and sitting with it a minute and f- envisioning if it was all done and gone and I was able to pack it up and put it in a briefcase and goodbye business, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel relieved? Does it make you feel resentful? Does it make you feel, you know, passionate about something else? You know, try to gauge your feelings and sit with the fact that it could, it could be gone, like really put yourself in that place. And if you would regret letting it be gone. Right. So for example, if in the next, you know, if we said, okay, by the end of this quarter, you're going to close your business down. How would you feel about that? Does it feel like a little bit of a weight is lifted or does it feel like, oh no, like I don't want to get rid of this. Like, no, I just, I'm just venting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Or if it's like, if I could, you might have all your whys and reasons why you feel like you can't shut it down or the investment you've put in. But if it's like, if in a perfect world, I could stop doing this business, I would then make it the perfect world. Yeah. If that's what you're thinking, if you're hanging on to it, because in a perfect world, you feel like you gone so far and you can't back out now, then maybe that's not the reason why you're staying in because then you're just living a life that that doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel, it's okay to pivot because you might've been on that journey, but still there comes a point when you have to decide what's my why now? And am I living in that? Like if your why is not the same and if it's like more like, so I don't have to, so I can, you know, feel like I succeeded, you know, by never letting go of it, then maybe you need to reassess what you wanted your life to be. So I wanted to share a story about a product business I had. And if you've listened for a long time, you know that I owned a company called Cuffs Couture. And when I came out with it, it was exciting. I was excited. I was making this awesome product. I had celebrities wearing it. I was in the magazines, country music awards, like Carrie Underwood, Kim Kardashian, all the people were buying this accessory that I made. And it was exciting and there was momentum behind it. And I did not have children. (laughs) I guess I could have signed it there. (laughs) And then the end. (laughs) No, I didn't have children. I was young. I was hungry. I had my designer consulting co-op and I started an apparel accessories brand because I was doing it for other people. I could do it myself. I was paying for publicist. I was gifting things. I got a note from Dakota Fanning. Like all these amazing things were happening where even my assistant cried one time when she saw like Carrie Underwood wearing it, right? It was exciting. And I ran it and I sold across the the globe and I sold to so many wholesale stores and I was selling online and orders were coming in. And I was like, I remember the first time it hit, I was drinking champagne. Great. Then the business got chugging along. We went to markets. I hustled. I did this for like three years. And then I would say probably one of the biggest changes was the cell phone changed because, and people started asking, well, where do you put your cell phone? Well, when I created my product, it had nothing to do with like having to store your cell phone in this wrist wallet. Ultimately, that's what it was. And then these giant phones came out and it was like, well, what am I going to do? And I saw sales start to decline. I had had my first kid and my other business was doing really well. And I asked myself, like, do I keep throwing money? into this business to try and make it work or develop something? Or is that passion there anymore? Like, do I feel that drive? Am I excited by it? And I was like, 
I know it was, it was, this is what brought me and I together actually, but in the end of it all, I decided that I didn't want to keep putting $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 into this business that I didn't have that drive anymore to make that convert into more money. And the product was becoming obsolete and I would have had to pivot, change, add things. And because it wasn't my only business, it was something where I decided to say, all right, I'm, I'm seeing feedback. Sales aren't working. You know, celebrities aren't wearing them. Things are starting to die down. I think for me in my life right now, the best thing to do would be to just stop. Right. And I think there's a good thing to point out in Jacqueline's journey is that when she started that journey, her feelings and herself and her values and everything, herself, just herself was different than the Jacqueline fast forward three years from there, right? So she came out of that. She lived her journey. She lived a wonderful life as that entrepreneur of Cuffs Couture. And she was walking away with it, knowing that she had that to take away from it, right? She had that experience. She had that hustle. She had that all the things that she had learned can now be transferred to her new life. That's the amazing thing about being an entrepreneur, you guys. This is all transferable, all the learnings, all the mistakes, all the data, all the failures, they can be transferred and you can do it better next time or you can do what you want to do, right? Because you're a new person now. You might have a new life. In this case, she did decide to quit, but if she had stayed on, she could have like, for instance, if the passion was still there, she could have adjusted and thought, oh, maybe I'll make a bridal version and they don't need their phones or, or whatever, right? I started but making I, headbands and bracelets because that was where the trends were going. Right. So you're just coming out with more ideas, but then she's gauging her feelings. And, and honestly, I think that we all develop in our lives and that's the hardest part is you get to some place and you're like, how did I get here? But you know what? It's okay that you're there. Now you have to decide, is this uh, the path that I still want to continue? And so for those of you that are worried, those of you that are edging towards like, yeah, maybe this isn't what I want anymore. I I did what was best for me. And sometimes, you know, I, I did what was best for me. And I really in the core felt I, you know, I just cannot commit any more cash to this business, right? I needed, I had a new baby. I needed to all the other things, Right. If you're feeling embarrassed to other people, if you're feeling ashamed, if you're feeling like a failure, I want to go back to what we started with in the very beginning. You are brave and courageous and you've done more than anybody, than the people that you feel that may be judging you have done. And even if those people have had businesses, they're going to look at you and be like, yeah, that makes total sense. Or I felt that way too. That's something to think about. But you guys, this is not the first business and this is not the last business or the only business you're ever going to have. If you look at any of the Shark Tank people like Mark Cuban or whatever, if you listen to their stories, they all started off in some way or another as an entrepreneur with an idea. They learned, they changed, they pivoted. They were like, oh, that was a bomb. Oh, this worked really well. And so exactly what Mina said, like you're gathering all these like seeds of information and you're going to make a decision for what's next. I wouldn't be podcasting. I wouldn't be here in your ears had I not, or the knowledge I'm able to give, had I not have had the experiences that I had to be able to then share with you guys the story of Cuffs Couture and how I shut it down. If I wasn't shutting it down, I would never have met Mina ever. I know that. And we all would be suffering then. So I really love this word that one of our masterminders used, Jennifer did for Zatka Decor. She said that we we start off our mastermind calls with our wins, right? And she said, it doesn't feel like a bunch of big wins, but I feel like it's a bunch of morsels of little wins, right? That word morsels, right? So you have to think about all the morsels that you're getting that are kind of feeding you along the way, right? Are they enough to keep you sustained and going? And would you regret it if you didn't live that life to gain even the good and bad morsels together, right? Yeah. So I think that's the ultimate last question is, would you regret it? Right. And so if you feel like an exit is something you want to do, give yourself a timeline. Give yourself this time of, if this doesn't happen by this time, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to shut it down. Or 
you know, if this happens by this time, I'm not going to shut it down, but let's say it did happen and you're still feeling resentful or you're not feeling aligned with the business, then you're realizing that maybe you're using excuses to keep it open. But ultimately what we want to say is no matter where you are in your journey, you're not alone in feeling like this is hard and it's hard. I guess I'm just going to say that like the struggle is real. (laughs) (laughs) It is indeed hard, but we get to live these lives, like they're incredible lives. I wouldn't change anything about being an entrepreneur. There have been times in my life that I felt like, geez, I feel so flighty or I feel like I come off as very flighty, right? I've sold different things. I've started different Etsy shops. I've tried different careers. I've been a graphic designer. I, you know, so many different things along my path, though a graphic designer is probably the one that's lasted the longest. But I would say that at least I got to do what I wanted to do, right? At this point, I'm very unemployable. Like we just started off with this podcast with, but the the skill sets that I have is incomparable, uncomparable to anybody that's out there because I've lived my life, right? Same with you. You have your own skill set and your own set of things that brought you here. I think being an entrepreneur is, is a gift. And there's times when you feel like a little bit like, gosh, why doesn't this person next to me understand why I'm trying all these different things? But really, who cares what they think? And honestly, they're, they don't even care. You know, what they want out of life is probably more like, it's just different, right? Yeah. The journey is not, our lives in general, the journey is not clear, right? Mm-hmm. But it's about, we don't know, we might have a set goal for the end destination, but that's like, that's not always in our control how we're going to get there, like that we do get there. Mm-hmm. But what I will say is that you enjoy the journey. So know when the struggle is hard. Know when this is just part of this world. Even if you're working full time and you're trying to side hustle this product business at night or in the morning on, or on weekends, or you are putting your kids in front of the TV so that you can get some shipments out, whatever it is that you're doing, know that there are road bumps, like pits in the road, like you're on a hiking, you're on a trail, you don't necessarily know what's coming, but you're in, you're looking around, you're enjoying it and you're picking up these nuggets, these morsels that Mina's saying. And then you decide where you want to go next. Your life is yours. You guys can decide what you want to do and where you want to go next. And we just want to encourage you in that. Like we are here to support you in whatever you do and you need to pick what's right for you in your life. Also, one more thing. Um, One of the things that I would get mixed up in my feelings about when it was hard was because I'm such an introvert, um, not these days, but for real, I'm still an introvert, guys, um, was that I would get confused with feeling lonely, with feeling like I wanted to quit. So in that, not feeling, I mean, I was feeling lonely, plus nobody could understand what I was feeling because I wasn't surrounded by people that understood what I was doing. So I think that one of the things that you guys can do, because as Jacqueline said, this is a journey and who you share it with makes one huge difference on whether or not you're going to quit. So if you need to put it on your calendar that I'm going to a conference to fill up my cup, or I'm going to market to fill up my cup or whatever you need to do to keep you going, because sometimes you get lost in it because you're simply feeling isolated And it's hard to feel passionate all on your own by yourself, you know, and making things on your own because you don't have anybody to share that with. So just to go back in recap of what to do when you feel like quitting, one, know that you're not alone in those feelings. Two, take a minute and think back to why you started this, what your goals were for your life and what kind of lifestyle this would create for you. Then think about if we told you that you were going to close this business down in the next couple months, how would you feel? Would you be like weight lifted or would you be like, oh no, don't like this is no, I can do this. You know, find your, find your gauge there. We um, have had a long conversation about this today and we're in our mastermind talking about this. So we were like, this is a right. good podcast I think episode. it was, um, think back to if you would regret it or not. Yeah. And then think about if the morsels that you pull away from it are enough to take away from it, right? Right. And then last but not least, it's think about it as more of a journey. Reframe it for yourself as a journey and what lens you want to see that out of. Like, is it going, who's sharing that experience with you? That same lens, right? Yeah. And who do you want? 
are you living the life you've imagined? So these are some of our tips. Again, you're not alone. And then hopefully if you are on the fence, it helps you lean one way or the other. Life is entirely too short to do things that you hate, to work with people you don't like, to just live a life that's not the one that you want to be living. So let's change that. Let's, I know we talked a lot about 2020, um, <laughs> even though it's been a rough 2020 so far for us. <laughs> How wise, yes. But the thing about it is that you guys have these decisions and we just want to empower you to know that you have a decision to make whatever choices you make. If you want to continue to get support, if you don't want to feel alone, you know, we do have our communities for you guys. We're on Instagram, send us a DM. We'd love to support you in these thoughts and feelings. And, you know, we're just so appreciative that you're here and remember that you are courageous and you are an example of somebody that people look up to no matter whether you succeed, I say that in quotes, or not. It Mm. doesn't matter. You are still an example of a courageous person. Yes, love it. Thanks, everybody. This episode is over, but it doesn't have to end. Head over to our Facebook group, search for the Product Boss Biz Community, or the link is also in the show notes. Come connect with other product bosses just like you. We'll see you in there. If you love the Product Boss Podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe, share, rate, and give a review on iTunes. Until next time, Product Bosses, let's make it happen.